What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We're back with the Boston Clinic, and today we're breaking down the junior middleweight IBF uh, title fighter, part of a uh, Showtime uh, junior middleweight triple header uh, headlined by Terrell Goucher and Eric Lani Lara, which I won't even bother doing a prediction video for. Um, we're going to break down uh, Jerry Swift Heard and Austin Charles, and also look out for Erickson Lubin taking on uh, Jamel Charlo prediction video on the WC junior middleweight fight. But we got an orthodox fighter fighting a southpaw, a veteran fighting an up-and-comer, new champion, Jerry Swift Heard, taking on the vet, Austin Charles, who's been there, done that, and some. And um, let's get into it, man, and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of both of these guys. Um, Jerry Swift Heard is a guy that's a uh, newly crowned champion, six, uh, you know, six straight TKOs in his last six fights. So he got a little bit of a knockout streak going here. Um you know, uh, got Austin Trout, who's a southpaw, um, who lost to Canelo and Laura back to belt, back to back, built himself back up, lost to Jamal Charlo, another championship B that he had uh, for the IBF before. He was the IBF holder before Jerry Swift Heard got it and dropped it because he couldn't make weight no more. And now um, Jerry, uh, Austin Trout's getting another crack at it. Um, and talk about the strengths. Let's start off with uh, Jerry Swift Heard. Haven't seen Jerry Swift hard fight. He's a um, he's a plotter. He got a wide base, and when you see a wide base similar to Adrian Broner, you know the guys you know bring a lot of power to the table. It's going to generate a lot of power. That's what a wide base usually um, you know signifies. Um, you know, solid jab, but the right hand is his bread and butter. His right hand has slumped people out cold. Right hand is drop people to the body. Um, have you want it? Overhand right is powerful. Straight right is powerful. Uppercut right hand is powerful. And he fights behind the shoulder. Kind of like a little um, slickness he got. He got a lot of upper body movement where he plots with his legs and moves with his upper body. Similar to like Canelo and James Tony, but he's not as elusive as those guys. Neither one of them. And, um, but it works for him. He rolls a lot of punches behind that shoulder. Tucks the chin. Um, keeps that right hand right by the chin. And it works for him. Talking about Austin Trout, um, strengths coming in this fight is, one, he's an experienced veteran. It's been 12 probably a lot of times. Jerry Swift has only been 10 rounds once, and he stopped Tony Harrison last time like eight rounds, I believe. I just watched that fight. Trout is um, is a good boxer. And, you know, good footwork, um, good balance guy, you know, good one to slip the right hand in there. Um, he's just a veteran. He, he knows what he wants to do. Got a high ring IQ. A very good, intelligent boxer. Once he's boxing and moving and he got things working, he can play off your aggression. Your aggression. If you're an aggressive fighter, he knows how to handle you and tame you. You know, have the pleasure of in interviewing Austin Trout, one of my most favorite guys. Just Swift Hurts, one of my up-and-coming favorite guys. Had a lot of interaction with him over social media as well. One of the good guys. About two of the best, you know, guys that for the fans in boxing that you can reach out to and won't mind, um, you know, responding and keeping a connection with you. Um, both of these guys are my guys, but like I said, non biased talk here for the most part. And you talking about the weaknesses? Start off with a uh, with Austin Trout. Um, just lacks power. You know, that's really what it is. With Austin Trout just lacks power. Um, and he's not best when he's being the lead. When he's a when he's the aggressor, he's not at his best. He's at his best when he's the matador and somebody else is the bull. We seen with uh with Canelo when he had to be aggressor. Uh, his game wasn't always on point. We seen when he was uh, fighting Eric Slane Delora. He when he had to be the aggressor, he tried to be an aggressor and try to shut Laura up. He was playing outside his uh, outside of his game. Um, by the way, he does have a, a solid chin as well. He's been down, but Austin Trout has never been stopped before. Um, he just lacks power, lacks elite speed, and 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 that's what it is. And he's just not good being an aggressor. Talk about the weaknesses from Jerry Swift Heard. What I seen is basically the base. Um, his base is wide. He has a problem cutting the ring off on guys, which it seems like 95% of boxers don't know how to cut the ring off. That's one of the lost arts in, in body punching, according to Mike McCallum. Um, but, you know, for Jerry Swift Herb, that's basically his biggest weakness is cutting the ring off. You see, he did a lot of following on Tony Harrison. Only reason he truly caught up to Tony Harrison because Tony Harrison got tired. You know, if he gets he, he fights somebody who knows how to move smartly and use the space and not move, not run. And when you move a lot, you lose a lot of energy. And at some point, you have to sit down. When you know some fight somebody that know how to move 
and, and set and fire and move enough where they don't get tired but expose your foot weakness, then you're in trouble. And I think that's what he's kind of facing in Austin Trout, um, you know, um, and experience. You know, being on the world championship level, this is his first time really fighting an elite um, or a former elite world champion. You know, this is, I think, his first prize fighting fight for real. You know, I know he's fought JoJo Dan and guys of that nature, but he's fighting a guy who's been there, done that with the best from Canelo to Lara to beat Miguel Cotto at MSG. He has that experience. And that's what that can hurt him. Experience and, and, and lack of foot speed and a guy who knows how to use his 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 footwork but doesn't know but knows how not to drain itself. And also another weakness is for the in the experience category, Jeff Hurd Swift Hurd has only been ten rounds once. So keep that in mind. Um, he's going to have to battle when he gets to deep in those championship rounds, you know, 10, 11, 12. It might be a little difficult for him, but, you know, something that it's nothing that other fighters didn't have to uh, face. Let's talk about strategy. Start with Austin Trout. Obviously, you know where I'm going here. Um, box and move. Be the matador. You know, you got a bull in front of you. You got to want to come and bring the pain. Austin Trout is very comfortable doing that. Sticking a jab in his face. Putting a one-two. Sliding that left hook right behind him, you know, checking off the checking with the right hook, you know, because he's a southpaw, and moving away from you know Jerry Swift Hurd's right hand, you know, you know, moving in and out, moving side to side, mixing it up, planting some, letting your hands go, moving away from the right hand, firing, keeping the guy off balance. Is a guy doesn't cut the ring off very well. You got a guy who doesn't cut the ring off, let you slide right or left. He's gonna be able to go away from that left hand or that straight right, that good right hand he got all all day. You know, going to roll away from it. He's going to be able to slip it, period. He's going to be able to shoot the one, two in. Uh, Hard is going to try to roll and counter. Austin Trout is going to know how to get out the way because you're going to take your chances with the with the left hand before you take your chances with that rock solid power right hand with just with her. And basically, that's what it is. I think um, Trout should mix in some body work in this fight as well. Um, a guy who's never been beyond ten rounds can get gas. I think that's very very um, key for him. But just keeping him off balance. Sometimes planting with the one, two, and slipping the right hook behind it for I'm slipping the left hook behind it for for trout, moving moving a little bit, hitting, picking up, moving again, just utilizing the ring and and, and exposing this guy's foot, uh, foot his his base weakness, foot weakness. That's basically that's gonna have to be the, the game plan is and, sli- and sliding some some uh, body work in there for Austin Trout to slow him down for for the later rounds to make him um, more of a stationary target for him. This is the perfect fight for Austin Trout to shine and get a world title for him. From a guy who literally doesn't run, doesn't move, doesn't know the doesn't know the score, knows how to play and retreat like Canelo did. You know, you know he had another aggressive guy in Jamal Jamal Charlo in front of him that he just lost to, but um, that's a different ball game. You know, Charlo and Swift Hurd really don't fight a lot, like in my opinion, for the most part. But for Swift Hurd, what it is is you know using that jab and hopefully cutting the ring off. You know, if he puts a jab on him, cut the ring off, you know, put Trout in closed corners, you know, the slowest fit work down if you ain't going to cut the ring off, you know, go to the body, make him a stationary target, and bring the right hand over, bring the right hand under, you know, bring body work with the right, the left and the right hand, you know, use the jab to put him in positions to be vulnerable. I think that's very key for him. It's as simple as that. You know, cutting the ring off, putting the jab on him and occupy him, slide some body shots in there. To bring those hands down, and when he's wary of those body shots and those hands starting to come down, put that right hand over the top. And if you're looking for the right hand over the top, then you slide the right hand, which you got a powerful right uppercut over there. Shoot the right down, the, uh, down straight right down the uh, middle frequently because uh, straight rights is an issue for southpaws as well as straight lefts for orthodox for Austin Trout as well. I think this is going to be a very, very good fight. I think this fight has the ability to steal the card because both of these guys are hungry. And Austin Trout is super hungry because he wants his world championship back. And he knows this is probably going to be his last chance at world champion at a world championship, you know. Um, he knows this is his last raw. And he has an opponent that hasn't really been on the prize fighting level. He hasn't really been in there with the elite. He hasn't really been in there with the guys Austin Trout has faced. This is a big um, gap in experience. And um, potentially it might be some gap in, in talent. If Austin Trout can expose that on his end, it could be. And, it's, and if Swift Hurt wins, it's gonna be a, a, a talent gap in his in his side. You know, Swift Hurt is a big junior middleweight. You gotta remember that he's six one. He's probably the biggest one out there with Jamel Charlo still that's still active. 
He's six one. I think he has seventy six inch reach, um, and a strong hand. You know, so his pressure usually wears his opponents out. But it's nothing that Austin Trout isn't uh, isn't accustomed to. He probably fought Canelo, that was big as fuck as well. But I'm gonna pick Jerry Swift. Heard a split decision. Um, gonna be a very very close fight. Maybe a rematch. Maybe not. But Swift heard by split split decision. We gone.